Hello and welcome to In Depth. I am Tina Jha. The Narendra Modi government introduced the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code in 2016 to resolve claims involving insolvent companies. Now, this code was intended to tackle the bad loan problems that were affecting the banking system in the country. Two years on, the IBC has succeeded in a large measure in preventing corporates from defaulting on their loans. There has been a significant improvement for financial creditors as it enabled a huge recovery rate in insolvency cases in a time-bound manner. According to Finance Minister Arun Jaitley, the IBC process has changed the debtor-creditor relationship. A number of major cases have been resolved in just two years, while some others are in advanced stages of resolution. Today in In-Depth, we trace the journey of the IBC and how it has turned out to be a major economic reform by helping to contain the rising NPA problem. The Insolvency and Bankruptcy Court got the President's assent in 2016. The Act took six more months to become active. By December, rules were framed, professional standards made and professionals enrolled. In our next report, we take a look at how the entire process evolved and the success rate in two years. In over two years of its existence, the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code has shown its effectiveness of IBC in a good measure. Detailing the performance of the IBC in a blog post, Union Finance Minister Arun Jaitley says, so far 1,322 cases have been admitted by the National Company Law Tribunal. 4,452 cases have been disposed at the pre-admission stage. The amount settled was around 2.02 lakh crore rupees, while 66 cases were resolved after adjudication. In the resolution cases, realization by creditors was around 80,000 crore rupees. Some of the big cases, such as Bhushan Power and Steel Limited and SR Steel Limited, are in advanced stages of resolution and are likely to be resolved in the current financial year. Realization in these cases is expected to be around 70,000 crore rupees. 260 cases have been ordered for liquidation. If you go by the number, as mentioned by Finance Minister in his blog, you will find that many cases are getting resolved outside the court. That is the biggest success. People are not going to court. People are trying to resolve the issue and that is lessening the burden of our judiciary system. The Finance Minister has also pointed out that the NCLT has become a trusted forum of high credibility. Recoveries of monies parked in insolvent companies has taken place through three methods. Firstly, after the introduction of Section 29A, companies are paying up their loans in order that they do not cross the red line and get referred to the NCLT. This has resulted in the banks receiving monies from potential debtors who pay in anticipation of the default. Defaulters know well that once they get into IBC, they surely will be out of management because of Section 29A. Secondly, once a petition of the creditor is filed before the NCLT, many debtors are paying at the pre-admission stage so that declaration of insolvency does not take place. Thirdly, many major insolvency cases have already been resolved and many are on the way of resolution. Those that cannot be resolved move towards liquidation and the banks are receiving the liquidation value. The Finance Minister has underscored that those who drive companies into insolvency exit from management, which leaves it open for selection of a new, honest and transparent management. There is no political or governmental interference in the cases. If you take the number, I mean almost 2 lakh crore worth of money recovered through IBC before NCLT. I mean, uh, if you go by the numbers, I can just read the number for you that so far 1,322 cases have been admitted by NCLT. 4,452 cases were settled before any further action and that managed to get almost 2 lakh crore. And if you take another 60 or 80,000 crore rupees which were uh, uh, resolved during the NCLT thing, then its amount is almost 3 lakh crore. So you are able to recover 3 lakh crore in just 2 years. Isn't a big success? 
The finance minister also emphasized that IBC has changed the debtor creditor relationship. Now the creditor no longer is chasing the debtor but vice versa. An example of the improving lending borrowing behavior is the increase in conversion of NPAs into standard accounts and decline in new accounts falling in the NPA category. The finance minister also explained the story of the rising NPAs in the books of the Indian banks. He said during 2008 to 2014 banks lent indiscriminately. This led to a very high percentage of NPAs which was highlighted by the asset quality reviews of the Reserve Bank of India. This led to prompt action by the government appointing an expert committee which in its report in 2015 recommended the IBC. Following this a bill was introduced in Lok Sabha and referred to a joint committee of parliament. The committee submitted a report recommending some changes in the legislation. In May 2016 the IBC was approved by both houses of parliament. Soon after the NCLT was constituted the insolvency bankruptcy board of india was established and the regulations were framed by the end of 2016 nclt began to receive corporate insolvency cases in his blog arun jaitley also accused the congress of leaving behind the legacy of an anachronic system of resolving commercial insolvency with inputs from astha kulshresht bureau report rajya sabha tv The Insolvency and Bankruptcy Court has speeded up the process of insolvency for companies in financial distress. Let's take a look at the provisions of the court and the framework it provides to resolve insolvency in a time-bound manner. The Insolvency and Bankruptcy Court 2016 seeks to consolidate the existing framework by creating a single law for insolvency and bankruptcy. Introduced in the Lok Sabha in December 2015, it was passed on 5th May the next year by the Lok Sabha and on 11th May 2016 by the Rajya Sabha. It received President's assent on 28th May 2016. To ease the process, the IBC consolidated numerous existing acts, including the Securitization and Reconstruction of Financial Assets and Enforcement of Security Interest Act 2002, the SIC Industrial Companies Special Provisions Act 1985, among others. Under Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016, a bankrupt entity is a debtor. that has been adjudged bankrupt by an adjudicating authority through a bankruptcy order the court creates time bound processes for insolvency resolution of companies and individuals it is applicable on companies limited liability entities firms and individuals all firms other than financial service providers fall under the scope of the ibc this act is to provide uh, Uh, uh companies those who are in in default mode uh, that they can uh, be restructured and there is a exit rule for the uh, company so that is a very good move by the government during the last 2 3 years that the uh, companies which are not able to perform well uh, they have to uh, and they have some room to exit from the business there that is the uh, insolvency act actually earlier we had an act called sika after that we have surface these two acts uh, have not been able to give the desired result and in 2015 when npa level was too high after asset quality review done by rbi there was a need to have one particular mechanism to resolve all these issues so government came out with a draft insolvency and bankruptcy code which was later adopted by both houses of parliament and it became an act in 2016 after that a tribunal called national company law tribunal nclt was formed and by december 2016 nclt started receiving all cases of the insolvency and bankruptcy the court outlines separate insolvency resolution processes for individuals companies and partnership firms The process may be initiated by either the debtor or the creditors. For companies, the process needs to be completed in 180 days. That may be extended by 90 days. For startups, small companies and other companies with assets 
less than 1 crore rupees the resolution process will be completed within 90 days of initiation of request which may be extended by 45 days the court created a robust institutional framework for administering the bankruptcy procedure insolvency professionals or ips manage the insolvency process they are members of insolvency professional agencies the IPAs also furnish performance bonds equal to the assets of a company under insolvency resolution. Information utilities or IUs have been established to collect, collate and disseminate financial information to facilitate insolvency resolution. The third pillar is the adjudicating authority with jurisdiction over cases by or against the debtor. National Company Law Tribunal has jurisdiction over companies, other limited liability entities. Debt Recovery Tribunal has jurisdiction over individuals and partnership firms other than limited liability partnerships. Appellate authorities are NCLAT, DRAT. The court also established the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India to oversee the insolvency proceedings. The board has 10 members including representatives from the ministries of finance and law and the reserve bank of india after implementation of ibc one of the key things which has happened that there is a fear among defaulter they just want to repay the money so that the case does not become an insolvent case because if it comes into nclt then they will lose management control you will be out of the company so if you are out of the country uh, out of the company then it will be a difficult thing for you so what has happened now the promoters who defaulted they have started repaying the money they don't want to go into nclt they just want to finish the work before nclt so we call it as the pre-admission out of the court settlement kind of thing and that is the best thing has happened the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code has provided a clear, coherent and speedy process for early identification of financial distress. It not just seeks to liquidate the firm if it is not financially viable, but also recommends a restructuring plan if the firm is viable. With inputs from Astha Kulshresht, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. The impact of the new Insolvency and Bankruptcy Law has been huge. According to reports, the government is expecting bad loan recoveries to exceed the 1.8 trillion target for the current financial year. Some big accounts are in the process of getting resolved, while others are lined up for resolution under the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. Among the distinct benefits from the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code, the one that deserves a special mention is the role that is playing in addressing the non-performing assets of the banking sector. Banks, uh, earlier MP NPAs were increasing and uh, uh, banks were not able to uh, uh, majorly uh, count them that, uh, that these are the now assets which are not uh, uh, majorly the non-performing assets. So now the uh, this move uh, has uh, benefited majorly for the businesses that uh, banks can also uh, list out the companies which are not able to perform well and in the uh, willful defaults uh, can come out with their problems. Bad loans erode the capital of the banking sector. This in turn limits their ability to lend credit. Lack of credit in the economic system impacts business expansion and continuity. Not just public sector banks, but even private sector banks have been hit. At the end of September 2017 quarter, 21 listed PSU banks had combined gross NPAs of 7.3 lakh crore rupees. This was a growth of over 27% as compared to September 2016 quarter. With the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code, scheduled commercial banks managed to cover more from non-performing assets in 2017 and 18 against 2016 and 17. Banks are now able to get their money back. If you take the number of uh, amount recovered during first half of this fiscal, it is almost more than double than what they recovered last year. It happened just because of IBC and that is the biggest success of IBC. Other thing that NPA has come down. 
Now the banks are in a better position to lend. According to the RBI's report on trend and progress of banking in India 2017 and 18, the ratio of amount recovered to the NPAs improved as much as 41.3% against 13.8% in the previous year. Banks recovered 5.28 lakh crore rupees compared to just 38,500 crores in the previous year. The maximum amount recovered was 4 lakh 92,500 crores from 21 companies. The ratio of amount recovered to the amount involved was 49.6 percent. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. An amendment act to the IBC was passed to primarily prevent unscrupulous persons from misusing or vitiating the provisions of law. The amendment has brought in a slew of positive changes to the court, which has significantly helped in boosting the framework of insolvency resolution. Here is an overview of the important amendments made to the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016. More than 2 years after its implementation, the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016 has undergone some significant amendments by way of the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code Amendment Ordinance 2018. The code provides a time-bound process for resolving insolvency in companies and among individuals. The president promulgated the insolvency ordinance on 6th June 2018 that made substantial changes to the code. This ordinance has affected mainly real estate and financial sectors. The notable changes in the insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016 are some special benefits to the micro, small and medium sector enterprises. The ordinance provides that the ineligibility criteria for resolution applicants regarding NPAs and guarantors will not be applicable to persons applying for resolution of MSMEs. The central government may in public interest notify the applicability of certain other provisions of the code of MSMEs. Promoters of MSMEs are allowed to bid for their companies as long as they are not willful defaulters doesn't attract any other related disqualification. The ordinance rectified the anomaly in section 29A of the existing act which had barred promoters of defaulting assets for their assets. Now lot of reforms are happening from the Reserve Bank of India side like uh, for the facilitation of MSME Uh, to strengthen the msme sector because msme sector is a major contributor in the economic growth of the country uh, contributing at around 32 to 33% in the uh, overall gdp and uh, uh, its contribution in the employment generation is also immense so there are, there are lot of reforms in the last 2 3 days uh, by the reserve bank of india first is the credit restructuring of the msmes one time uh, window is uh, provided to the uh, msme sector to restructure their loans Uh, up to the 25 crores and second is the uh, formation of a committee that will look after the all issues related to the msme sector how to facilitate the sector and what are the major problems the ibbi regulations 2018 include provisions of bankruptcy to be applicable for personal guarantors of corporate debtors in section 2 of the ibc code an amendment is made to include guarantor as a category different from individuals the intention of this amendment is to make provisions of insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016 applicable to personal guarantors as well though part 3 is not applicable immediately to other individuals and partnership firms the most significant change was the categorization of home buyers as financial creditors the definition of financial debt has been expanded to include any amount raised from an allotee under a real estate project the classification as a financial creditor also enables home buyers to initiate the corporate insolvency resolution process against large real estate houses The ordinance also allows the financial creditors to appoint authorized representatives cases when the debt is in the form of securities or deposits. These representatives will participate and vote in the committee of creditors as per prior instructions from the creditors. If creditor does not give prior instructions, the representative will abstain from voting. 
This ordinance provides relief to home buyers by recognizing them as financial creditors. Due representation in committee of creditors make them an integral part of the decision making process. Section 7 of the law allows financial creditors to file application seeking insolvency resolution process. This is important because many home buyers are facing hardships on account of delayed and incomplete real estate projects. It was observed that corporate debtors were trying to get backdoor entry and gain control of the defaulted body through its associate companies and group companies and were getting loan waivers. Hence, Section 29A was specifically inserted in Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016 to clear the criteria of people who are ineligible to submit the resolution plan. This section clearly excludes all defaulters and their associate companies or group companies to be a resolution applicant. There were uh, roadblocks that uh, uh, there were no uh, such kind of laws and uh, companies were not able to uh, come out with their uh, financial problems. Now they can discuss and uh, uh, come out with their a uh, lot of problems that they are facing in the business processes. The amendment has brought in a slew of positive changes to the code by boosting the framework of the insolvency resolution. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And that's it from us in today's edition of In-Depth. We'll be back same time tomorrow with a focus on some other subject. You can also watch our episodes online on YouTube and Twitter and get back to us with your feedback and suggestions. Thanks very much for your time.